Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is September 26, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk about a new study that has made some conclusions or, or produced some findings about the Southern Ocean, namely that the observed warming that we have seen in the Southern Ocean has been primarily driven by increasing atmospheric greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide related to fossil fuel burning, and secondarily due to ozone depletion near the pole. In addition, the study has found that the observed increases in freshwater have been due to increasing storm activity in the Southern Ocean which has increased rainfall over the Southern Ocean and therefore increased freshwater content as well. The study has not found a conclusive fingerprint to increasing Antarctic melt resulting in increased freshwater content, but scientists note that increased freshwater content is likely to occur if fossil fuel burning emissions continue and Antarctic melt continues to accelerate. Before I get into some bits and pieces related to this new nature study, I'd like to talk to you a bit about the Southern Ocean in general. Now the region, reason, I'm sorry, the region researched includes the area in the Southern Hemisphere between the latitude lines of 30 degrees south latitude and 60 degrees south latitude. And what I'm looking at right now is a sea surface temperature anomaly map. So you can see that sea surface temperatures in this region in many locations are above normal in this zone with a wide ranging effect for large sections of the Southern Hemisphere, including regions of South America, New Zealand, Australia, and parts of the southern Indian Ocean near Africa. Of course, this is a daily sea surface temperature anomaly map, and these sea surface temperature anomalies can fluctuate from day to day, but even overall now we see warmer to much warmer than normal temperatures over large sections of the southern ocean, despite the, the fact that, that there are some cool pools in the region. Looking at the Nature article, I'd just like to pull one quote from the abstract for this article. And the, the study used Argo floats and, and floats at varying depths within the Southern Ocean to measure temperature and salinity in order to gain the information for the study. And study notes that using a detection and attribution analysis, we show that the observed changes are inconsistent with the internal variability or the response to natural forcing alone. Rather, the observed changes are primarily attribu attributable to human-induced greenhouse gas increases with a secondary role for stratospheric ozone depletion. So what that basically means is that the observed warming in the Southern Ocean has been fingerprinted primarily to increase atmospheric greenhouse gases from sources as such as primarily through fossil fuel burning, but also a, a secondary signal has been detected as a result of stratospheric ozone depletion, which is strongest over the South Pole of the Earth system. So, so the two primary drivers of warming of the Southern Ocean system are human induced. And the primary in inducer is increased atmospheric greenhouse gases in the Earth system, primarily from fossil fuel burn. I'm gonna go ahead and, and show you some images. This, this image showing the increase in temperature at a depth of zero to 200, I'm sorry, 2,000 meters in the Southern Ocean, as well as the overall decrease in salinity at the same depths through the 
time period in which temperature and salinity were observed. Looking at another set of images, we see similar changes to the Southern Ocean system with increasing temperatures throughout most depths of the Southern Ocean, as well as decreasing salinity throughout most depths. I'd like to also call your attention to some quotes that were provided by an article by Sabrina Schenkman over at Inside Climate News. I just want to pull some quotes from some scientists related to the study. Uh, one from oceanographer Neil Stewart, who notes the observed warming in the Southern Ocean is due to human influence. He further notes that that may have been suspected or proposed before, but this is the evidence that really proves it. Looking further into the article, I'd just like to pull another couple of quotes here. Actually, I'd just like to pull one more quote here from a scientist, David Wilson, who notes that if we wish to avoid, avoid the worst consequences of human-caused climate change, and you can think this can have effects on coastal regions, agriculture, island nations, clearly we need to make efforts to change our behavior patterns and decarbonize the economy. David Wilson is in particular pointing at the risk of a 20 to 30 foot sea level rise when looking back at, at previous climates, particularly the Emian, about 125,000 years ago when sea levels were about 20 to 30 feet higher and temperatures were in the range between one and two degrees Celsius above baseline Holocene averages and we are entering that range now. So the observed warming in the Southern Ocean has, can have enormous consequences for glaciers in the region of Antarctica, in particular the most vulnerable glaciers. And this warming in the Southern Ocean also tends to telegraph beneath the surface and move in toward a number of glaciers surrounding the Antarctic system, particularly in the edge zones. And these glaciers contain massive amounts of water that could be released on rather short timescales as the earth warms and as more heat gets projected into the ocean system and comes into contact with glaciers. So a, a new context provided by a recent set of scientific research showing that Southern Ocean warming is being driven primarily by human-caused climate change, and, which is in itself primarily driven by increases in atmospheric greenhouse gases, which is itself driven by fossil fuel burning. A, a bit of a landmark article here, fingerprinting changes to, in the Southern Ocean to human caused climate change. I encourage you to take a look at it. I will be providing links. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.